and we are back. There's this interesting problem on courtship called CCAM, and this is what the problem says. You have a graph, almost connected graph. So all the nodes are connected to each other except for one to six in this example. What that means is, had this graph been directed, one to six would not have existed in the edge, or six to one would be an edge which didn't exist in this graph. Okay, and our job is to find all valid permutations of this graph. So permutations of a graph are just taking the nodes in any order and you know laying them down. So two, three, four, six, one, five is, is a valid permutation. If every node has an edge to the next node in that permutation. Okay, so two to three is this, yeah, that, that seems valid. Three to four is this node, yeah, we can get there. Four to six is over here, that's nice. And six to one does not exist. Okay, this violet edge, this dotted edge does not exist. So, in fact, I can just remove that, but this is just to make things obvious that this edge does not exist. So this permutation itself is invalid. Okay, that's what the problem defines. The other thing is, look at this permutation, two to three, three to four, four to six, just the same as earlier. So we are at six now and six to five. So six to five does exist and five to one also exists, which makes this permutation valid. Okay, our job is to calculate the number of valid permutations. Now, because we have an almost complete graph, what that means is that if, you know, if this graph is complete, then we would have n factorial permutations which would be valid. And you could lay the, the graph nodes in any way that you wanted. They are n in number, so n factorial would have been the answer. What we need to find is the number of valid permutations, which is n factorial minus the number of invalid permutations. Invalid permutations are stuff like this. Okay, we need to count them and then we need to output the answer like this. In fact, it doesn't really matter because n factor is something we can calculate very easily. So we are mainly interested in finding the invalid permutations in this graph. One of the ways you can solve this problem is by using the inclusion exclusion principle. Okay, uh, take all valid permutations, assume that the entire graph is valid, so that is n factorial. Then subtract from all permutations those permutations which have the edge 1 to 6 in them. Okay, 1 to 6 is illegal, so you don't want that, so you subtract all those permutations. You also subtract all the permutations having 6 to 1 in them. Okay, that's, that's another thing that you do. So now these are gone. But there's one problem. What about those permutations which had 1 to 6 and 6 to 1 both? Okay, technically this won't happen in our graph, but if you have multiple edges missing, uh, multiple uh, edges missing, yes, of course, uh, then what's going to happen is you will have stuff like 3 to 4 also and 4 to 3. So this is one scenario which can occur. The edge 6 to 1 and the edge 3 to 4 have been used in the permutation which are both illegal and you have already subtracted for each of them. So what you want to do is you want to add now. Okay, simple inclusion exclusion, you can read up about this in the description below, it's, uh, there's, there's a link over there. And using this principle, you can solve this problem reasonably efficiently. Okay, it will pass the time limit. But asymptotically, uh, the solution that we are going to be talking about is better and it uses dynamic programming with bitmask. Okay, so let's understand how to do that. Another way to solve this problem is to look at the edges, the edges which are missing, and then see the nodes which are being affected by them. So one, and I added another missing edge, which is one to five, that doesn't exist anymore. So one, five, and six are the nodes which are having issues. We can call them bad nodes. Okay. What's the other thing that we should look at? One, five, and six are bad nodes we should find out at what relative ordering do they have issues. For example, we have three nodes, which means there's six possible combinations we can have for those nodes, six possible arrangements. One, five, six, that's one arrangement. One to five has an issue. So this is not allowed, but five to six, which is over here, five to six is allowed. So the way that we can fix this arrangement is to actually put a node over here between one and five. That will make this part of the permutation valid. Okay, similarly, one to six, I mean, one has an issue with everyone, so one to six 
there's an issue over here. We need to push in one node, and this arrangement will be legal then. One six five. Five to one issue. We need to push a node here. One to six again issue. So over here we need to push in two nodes to make the arrangement valid. All right, and you see how that goes on. So for any possible permutation of the bad nodes, so we permute the bad nodes. And what's happening is every time you're permuting the bad nodes, you're trying to figure out how many nodes do you need to stuff in. So let's write this a little neatly. Let's just permute the bad nodes. Find stuffed nodes, number of nodes which you need to stuff. Let's call this X. Let's call this B, which is bad nodes, and total number of nodes are n. So have a look at this. You have b bad nodes, which means you have n minus b good nodes, right? These guys don't have any issues. So n minus b, those good nodes, can be arranged in any way that you like. It does not affect the permutation. Okay, n minus b in any way that you like. So that clearly gives us n minus b factorial arrangements for the good nodes. This is one factor which will come in the answer. Now here's the interesting part. What you need is to take this arrangement with the stuffed nodes and mix them with the remaining nodes. Okay, the remaining nodes, of course, is total number of nodes n minus the number of bad nodes you had minus the number of nodes you tied down. So these are the remaining nodes. That is, let's say, a string. Okay, that's one string with these many characters. The second string that you have is this arrangement itself. Okay, it has an ordering, and the number of characters you have in this, of course, is b plus x. This is the second string. But now, what you need to do is merge these two strings. So when you you are merging two strings and keeping the relative ordering with them, uh, if the first string is of length a and the second string is of length b, then this is the formula for the number of arrangements you can have in the two strings, keeping the relative ordering the same. A plus B factorial upon A factorial by B factorial. This is basically because you have a string of length A plus B, and you're fixing A positions in this. So that is just uh, A plus B C A. If you fix A positions or you fix B positions, both of them are symmetrical. Uh, once you do that, this is the formula you get. Okay, because your the relative ordering is still the same. So that this is the formula for merging two strings. But there's an issue here. B plus X is not the number of positions that you have in the string actually, because these positions are fixed. You can't take these characters and move them around. They have to be right here, just in front of six or just behind one, which are the way you like to look at it. So these positions are fixed, which means that this string is offering you just B positions, not B plus X. To make it valid, we used up X positions of this string. Okay. So you have strings of lengths n minus b minus x and b. You need to merge them together. What you get using this formula a plus b is n minus b minus x plus b factorial upon b factorial n minus b minus x factorial. So minus b and plus b cancel out. We have n minus x in the numerator. Okay, and this is just the second term that we need. The first term over here is going to be multiplied by this term, which is b factorial n minus b minus x factorial. Take your time to understand this. This is because we have two strings, and this string is not offering as many positions as it should. So that's why we have this kind of a formula. We are taking two strings, merging them together, trying to find out all interleavings of the string. Common formula. So we see that this is completely infeasible because you have seven edges, which means at most fourteen bad nodes, and that means you have fourteen factorial permutations to work with in the worst case. And this is about ten days to the power eleven. So this is too large. What we can do is something similar to traveling salesman using dynamic programming. Okay, in that what happens is you look at your current city, you see the number of cities you already visited. 
and if there is any other way to get to the same city with the same cities visited uh, at a lower cost then you uh, then you discard this tour okay there's no point actually looking forward because you came here with cheaper cost and having visited the same number of cities or more number of cities whatever you like so uh, this is the principle of traveling salesman using dynamic programming we are going to be applying the same thing over here what we need is the set of bad nodes we have already visited all right so one of the things that we need is set of bad nodes and right? that will be a state a part of the state in our dynamic programming solution what's the second thing well which city we are at currently so i'm, I'm thinking about tsp but which node are we at currently so that is current node okay these two exist in tsp also and in fact it's defining our state quite well what's the other final thing that we need the number of nodes that we have tied to this position so i'll write that in blue because it's important number of nodes tied up to this position because what's happening here in our permutations is that there is a possibility that 1 to 3 has one node tied but 1 to 4 has two nodes tied because 2 to 4 has an issue okay 2 to 3 didn't have an issue over here you have two nodes tied up to this point and over here you have one node tied up to this point yeah well the number of uh, the set of bad nodes will change here but you can you can imagine a, an example where uh, the set of bad nodes is the same the current node is the same but the number of nodes tied are different okay so these three parameters clearly define a state in the dp that we need have a look at the first permutation which is 1 2 3 4 the second permutation is 1 2 4 3 and let's say 1 and 2 have a problem between them so uh, you need to stop one city here and stop one city here you come all the way down and you look at this state 2 1 3 4 1 and 2 have a problem so we stop one city here and once you come to 3 this node 3 you see that you have already hit this state earlier how well 1 and 2 had a problem so there was one city tied down so number of cities tied the second thing was the current node was 3 at one point over here okay so that's been visited so current node was 3 and the set of bad nodes that you had already hit was 1 2 3 1 2 3 So one two three was the set of bad nodes you hit. So this is your state of the DP. In fact, to to keep it consistent with that, I'll just put this as three one. So this is something you already visited. You are already computed it for this node, and therefore you can directly get the answer over here. Okay. So uh, you don't need to compute it again. You don't need to go up to four. You can return from here itself. And in fact, this will go on happening quite a few times. instead of 14 factorial which we were looking at this state has the set of bad nodes which is 2 raised to power 14 in number right either you take the node or you don't so there are 14 in most so 2 raised to power 14 the current node so that's well 14 in number because uh, well there are 14 nodes yeah uh, and uh, number of nodes tied well that's again 14 So this is what you have. You have 14 square into 2 raised to power 14 as your overall time complexity. So if you take this to be m as defined in the question, you have m square into 2 raised to power 2m as the overall time complexity. This is the complexity that you require if the DP works. If the DP still hasn't been stored, like in this state. Over here, uh, then what you need to do is you need to go to the remaining branches, remaining cities from this. So from three you can go to only four, but from two, as you can see, you can go to three or four, and similarly from one you can go to two, three or four. So that is at most m in number. So overall time complexity for this will be order m cube. That's m cube over here into two raised to the power two m. This is the overall time complexity. and let's just briefly go over have a revision of what we just did we took all the nodes we found out the permutations of those faulty nodes 
we found out a formula to actually calculate for every permutation what is its contribution to the overall number of permutations that you can have okay using this formula then what we did is we saw that it's too expensive 14 factorial so we went for a dynamic programming approach very similar to tsp okay and we said that the number of states the number of states or rather the parameters in the states that we need are the set of the band nodes that we have at that point the current node that we are at right now and the number of nodes that we have stuffed in in between okay with these three things we can define the state so in case this has not been computed if dp of this has not been computed we move forward by doing this from 1 we go to 2 we change the current node to 2 we change the current node to 3 we change the current node to 4 and so on and so forth okay we try every node and set that as the current node okay whichever node we are going to now 2 3 4 whatever and finally if you have the set of bad nodes completely filled up meaning that your permutation is complete then you use this formula to find that permutation's contribution to the total sum okay so base condition done recurrence done because the recurrence is just from one state from the current state you move on to the next states which are possible all right so this kind of approach is not very easy to come up with especially during a contest but bitmask and dp comes up very often and you might want to have a look at the previous video i made for uh, the standard bitmask and dp problem i'll be sharing the code for this and in case you have any doubts or suggestions please leave them in the comments um, next is dp with graphs so if you want any notification for that of course you can subscribe until next time then see you